Hey everybody, I'm Dave Chichimori. I'm the natural history curator here at the South Carolina State Museum. I had the opportunity recently to work with a colleague in Alabama where we described a new species of shark that we found in Louisiana. So I want to kind of give you a little bit of an idea of how we do that. So how do we find a fossil and determine that it's a new species? So as a shark specialist, somebody who studies fossil teeth in particular, we don't know what the body looked like of these fossil sharks because that's not preserved. Usually we find just their teeth. So the teeth are the only thing that we have of that animal to figure out what it was. So how is it that we can tell different sharks from one another just based on their teeth? So if we take a look at this particular tooth here, and you can see that it's a big triangular tooth and it has these big pointy cusps, we call them, on the side of the tooth. And if we would zoom in, you could see that the tooth is very well serrated. If we compare that now to this tooth here, this is something called Megasilacus chubutensis. And it's a little bit broader than the tooth we just looked at. And those little cusplets on the side are actually very small. And the serrations are a little bit different in that they're more even as far as the size and the regularity on the tooth. Now if we move to this one, this is maybe something that everybody recognizes, and this is kind of the end of the line of this lineage of what we call megatooth sharks. And actually the two teeth that we saw before that are related to this, they're predecessors of this particular species. You can see that the tooth is much larger, very broad, and it's missing these lateral cusplets. We use those different features, the broadness of the tooth, the serrations, the cusplets or not, to determine that this particular tooth is different than that one as far as the different kinds of species. So when we were in Louisiana recently, we saw a collection of fossil teeth that had actually been collected 20 years before we were there to look at them. We looked at them and determined that the serrations, the shape of the tooth, the size of the tooth were different than any other species of what we thought were similar shark to that, and we put a new name on it. The name of the new species is Carcharhinus tingae, and Carcharhinus is a genus of shark that's still around today. The uh, dusky shark that we looked at earlier is a species of Carcharhinus. Tingae is actually the last name of somebody who worked at LSU. She was in the Geology Museum. She recently retired, but she was somebody who studied fossils in Louisiana for about 20 years or so. So what does this new discovery tell us? So the particular shark, Carcharhinus tingae, lived about 40 million years ago, and based on the shape of the teeth, we think that comparing that with modern sharks that have similar shaped teeth, they were eating fish, and it was probably about six feet long or so. So finding this particular new species gives us a better idea of what was going on in the ancient Gulf of Mexico at the time. And then when we compare what we know of from 40 million years ago to maybe 20 million years ago and today, we can see how the flora and fauna, the animals and plants that maybe lived in the Gulf of Mexico have changed over that great expanse of time. Now, in South Carolina, we don't know that Carcharhinus tingae lived here. We just haven't found their fossils yet. So we're not quite sure if that shark didn't actually live here, or we just haven't found rocks of the right age, or just simply haven't found their teeth yet. So we're still out there, we're still looking, and hopefully one of these days we find some more things and we know more about where that animal lived at that particular time. Although we don't have fossils of Carcharhinus tingae here at the South Carolina State Museum, you can come by and visit us to see our model of Megalosalacus chubutensis. We have a model of great white up there and a lot of other fossil shark teeth to see. We actually have a few other exciting discoveries in the works that we can't wait to share with you soon.